Welcome back. This is a Commander Craft stream that's going to be a little bit cut up, a little bit jumped around. This stream we do on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time over on twitch.tv slash Cross, And basically we take a commander and we make it together. If you come and you join in the chat, then you can suggest cards, have me look at things, everything like that. The catch of this is, while I do have EDA Trek up, I can't go straight to the EDA, EDA Trek page of the commander and just load up 100 cards that way. I feel like that's kind of boring, it's not as interesting. I can look up the color combination, I can look up the archetype, I can look up similar like strategies, and of course I can use Scryfall as you see on the screen to look at cards and see if I can determine if they're good or not, but I just can't go straight to, for instance, Quorum the Undertaker's page on EDA Trek and build the deck that way. I have to avoid Quorum's page. Segwaying. We're going to be putting together Quorum the Undertaker. Quorum the Undertaker is one of the Modern Horizons 3 commanders. Uh, he is in the Jund, the Dissa, the Restless. I keep going to say Relentless, but it's Restless. The Lorgarth deck. I really like Quorum. I think he's really interesting. He's a little bit of mill in a non-blue deck. He does have black, which that's really cool. Um, and graveyard stuff in general, right, has fallen into Golgari. Even like a little bit of Rakdos stuff has had graveyard interactions before so i really like that he is a human warrior he's a zero five and it costs one black red and green he gets plus x plus zero where x is the greatest power among creatures in all graveyards i'll talk about this in a little bit but we're going to make sure that greatest power is usually in our graveyard just in case we go up against like an enchantress or a white weenie deck or a spell slinger deck or like a token deck or something like that uh, whenever quorum attacks each player mills a card that's pretty cool too and during each of your turns, you may play a land and cast a spell from among cards in graveyards that were put there from libraries this turn. That wording is very specific. It's not saying that the card has to be milled. You can have, you can surveil, you can explore, you can search and put something into, like basically entomb a card. Uh, you have all those possibilities to get things into your graveyard and then be able to play them. So Entomb is basically like a tutor for a card to your hand, if that's what you need. With that being said, there's a few things I like to focus on with this kind of a commander. One, as a 0-5, and he gets his power from the greatest power among creatures in all graveyards, we're going to have a few creatures that are probably going to be the biggest power in the game in our in our deck slash hopefully then into our graveyard whether we entomb them out or mill them out two there's a couple of really interesting cards that we can put in here to interact with things going into the graveyard right uh one of them that i really like the idea of and it's going to go in there soon is scheming symmetry where you and somebody get to tutor something to the top of the deck you do that before combat then you attack with quorum even if they go get a land it doesn't matter what they get uh, and you can kind of politic with this, like, hey, I'm going to go get this. If you get something that answers problem player X, I can use them, right? Like, oh, I'm going to get a land. If you get a land, whatever. If you get, like, an answer, I'll use it against them. And that way you can kind of, like, you get to pull something out of somebody else's resources while just getting yourself a regular resource. Or you can get something that else that you're going to play, whatever. I just like that kind of interesting strategy. Um, we want cards that are going to put graveyards, or put cards into graveyards, that's really important. Again, uh, Surveil, Explore does do this, so we'll work with that. But usually when I build a deck, things I want to focus on first are my categories. I want card advantage, I want ramp, and I want interaction. Ramp should be relatively easy, we're in green. Card advantage, he's kind of card advantage himself, right? Because mills and then you can kind of play stuff out of everybody's things and then interaction i mean you just need some ways to get rid of things interaction i want to be a little bit careful with i don't predict we're going to have a very big field he's kind of a voltron -y commander uh another thing we need to focus on is ways to make sure he can connect with people's life totals so that we can commander damage people out so trample any other way we can get to make him hit fear is in uh black so we can do that those are some ideas off the top of my head. So like I was talking about before, I can go to pages on EDA Trek to get ideas, but I don't want to go straight to Quorum's page. So like right here, boom. 
and a staples, right? Like, this is something I can look at in order to get an idea. Things like Ignoble Hierarch, I do like that because that Exalted does work. Hey, Ben. Uh, Exalted does work really well with Quorum. That kind of gives them at least one power, no matter what. Uh, Cultivate and Farseek and whatever, they're fine. Secure Tribe Elder is another one where, like, if I mill it, he's easy to cast, and then I can uh, then sacrifice him. Keep him up as a blocker and then sacrifice him. I like stuff like that. I'm going to try to avoid the Goyfs. The Goyfs, because, because he's not a, a Goyf deck, we're not going to worry about him nearly as much. Birds of Paradise is a maybe for ramp. I do like Swiftfoot Boots over Lightning Grease for Quorum. Swiftfoot Boots allows you to still put things on him, like a Rancor or something like that, without you having to worry about Shroud, blah blah blah. Rogue Intervention is going to be big. I'm not going to worry too much about Mirkwood Bats because I don't think we're going to be making too many tokens for this. Uh, a Solemn? I like a Solemn. Solemn's fine. Uh, Kessig Wolfrun's definitely going to go in the deck. Harrow's fine, because Harrow's actually Harrow, Crop Rotation, and I think there's two others that do kind of the same thing. Those are actually really good, because... Oh, never mind. You can't replay the Sacrifice land. I was about to say, you could get the land back that you sacrificed, but that's not how that works, because it doesn't come out of the library. There are cards that we can put in that allow us to play lands from the graveyard. Like, I think... I think es Excavator is suggested for quorum because you're going to wind up milling some lands um and you're not always going to want to one thing to remember about quorum is that while you can cast spells from other people when they're milled or like tutored up into the graveyard whatever you cannot use mana as though it were any color right that doesn't say anything in there so you have to be able to then make blue and white if you want to cast blue and white spells Command towers and stuff like that obviously aren't going to work. Exotic Orchards, that's probably going to go in the mana base. Uh, reflecting Pool is view control. Okay, Reflecting Pool can be a way to like buff your ability to make land or mana of the same color. So that'll have to work too. Then that also means that things like Birds of Paradise is now a little bit more important. So I think Birds definitely goes in. When I do decks, I like to do type and tag because I like to be able to see my categories, and I always have those three categories, ramp, card advantage, and interaction. Noble Hierarch, like we said, we like the Exalted, and it's a ramp card. Two good suggestions that came out of chat, thank you Zynam, were Greater Tanuki, and Chef and Monitor. I like these because they're six powered creatures that you channel or cycle respectively to get lands uh, onto the battlefield. Having that power in the graveyard with the ramp is really cool. So I like both of these. The deck itself is probably going to look like it has a high mana curve at the end, but there's going to be a few cards that we don't plan on really ever casting. We, they're there literally just to go to the graveyard. So I am going to put both of these in. I like these ideas. These are cool. Even if you get these in your opening hand, you don't need to worry about spending 6 mana to just get a 6-5 trample. 3 mana, it's basically, it's not quite a cultivate because you're not getting 2 lands, but that's fine. Um, it's a land, you're trading off the second land for the 6 power, which 3, and then if you curve really well into Quorum at 4, obviously you're going to have the land tapped or for next turn. Now Quorum is going to be able to be a 6-5 itself. I think that's pretty cool. And then Sheffit's just, uh, Sheffit not only is going to get you a land or a desert onto the battlefield, but, oh, it's untapped. That's neat, and it's also a cycle, so you'll get to draw another card. So that's actually really cool. It's not, uh, again, it's not exactly Cultivate, but I think it's, I think that might be better than Cultivate for this deck. I like that. I like that a lot. This is also another suggestion from chat. This is from Aku Aku TV. I like this. This We'll put this in under uh, Card Advantage. I like the idea that you could mill this while you have like one of your big creatures in your hand. You're like, oh, how am I going to discard this, blah, 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 get this into my graveyard. You mill this, you play it, <laughs> you get two cards out of it to give away one. Like, I like that. That's funny. I like Delighted Halfling, and I like Delighted Halfling specifically for that secondary mana ability. So, mana of any color, spend this mana only to cast a legendary spell, and that spell can't be countered. 
It's nice for Quorum, so Quorum can't get countered, but if we're ever stealing legendary creatures from when we mill somebody, or whatever, however we get cards from a library into a graveyard, the fact that we can use mana as any color, I think that's I think that's neat. I think that's cool. So that's definitely going to be another ramp spell. Another card that's really cool for this deck because of how it will interact if you mill it is Faithless Looting. So if you mill it, you can do the draw two, discard two, and then flash it back. Like you could play it essentially twice in one turn without it having to be like in your hand or the card that you draw. I think that's kind of like that's that's cool. I like that. I didn't even think about this. I'm a terrible Golgari player because I constantly forget about Dredge. I was not playing Magic at the time Dredge was really popular, or even when it came out, I'd taken a break somewhere between high school and then when I got back into playing it as an adult, so it's just not really in my head. Chat just told me, Aku Aku TV just mentioned Stinkweed, Stinkweed Imp. Oh my god, I can speak. And this is a great idea because Dredge, again, cards from the library into the graveyard absolutely what you want to do there's also a land that came in the pre-can pre-can pre pre-con uh ben just told me it is doc more salvage that's gonna go in there i do land toward the end so that i can make sure i have the right numbers in the deck i always do them toward the end i kind of make my 62 ish non-lands and then i worry about that minus uh whatever mdfc's uh i always those can go in as a spell side but for stinkweed imp it's not really card advantage because there's a chance you're not going to get to cast all of them or play all the lands or whatever the case may be. I'm going to call that category grave fillers as things that put cards into graveyards. It can be a form of card advantage, but I want the card advantage to be more about drawing cards, if that makes sense. Because when you start getting into whether or not it's legitimate card advantage, there's like you play with numbers like even scrying is kind of like it's card selection not card advantage and stuff like that um i just don't want to get too deep in the weeds about that so we're just going to call them grave fillers because there's going to be a few other things that we put in there let me see the combinations for mill where's jund oh wow that's a lot higher than i thought it was going to be that's a lot higher than i thought it was going to be so i put a few more cards into the list scheming symmetry it's a double tutor i think i talked about it before two players search for things they put them on top uh then you attack with quorum they mill them and you can get them usually you're probably going to want to be one of the players it doesn't have to be i didn't even think about that it doesn't have to be but that is definitely a very good card plus it's a one black mana uh grave breaker lamia is twofold it is ramp in the sense of spells you cast from your graveyard cost one less to cast but you also get to search for a card put it in your graveyard and then shuffle your library so it is a grave filler, and you can put it into two categories on Moxfield. I just choose not to do that at first because otherwise it'll play, it'll it'll mess me up. Oh no, that's right, because I have the number in the lower left. Let's fix that. So now you can see I have it listed twice because it does two things. Skull Prophet, same thing. It is a ramp spell, but the second ability to put the top two cards into your library, that's really good. And it's a grave filler. And last but not least, Silvala Heart of the Wilds. So more times than not, when you play Quorum after you've gotten a few things in your graveyard, you're going to get to draw off the biggest creature on the battlefield. But the most important thing about Silvala is the tap to add X mana equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. So when Quorum's on the battlefield and he's 12, 11, bigger, he's going to be able to draw you a card with Silvala. And then you can just tap Savala and make tons of mana and play something from your graveyard. That's how the deck works. Added a few more cards. So, Milliken makes mana, mills a card. It is both a ramp card and a grave filler. Nyx Weaver. Love Nyx Weaver. Play this in many decks. At the beginning of your upkeep, two cards go... You mill two cards. And then you can exile Nyx Weaver in order to bring something from your graveyard back to your hand for if you need something later in the game. That's super important. Also, don't discredit having reach on an easy to cast body, especially when your commander and not a lot of the other cards that you have are going to have flying or reach. It might save your life one day. And then, what was the other one that I just put out? Solemn, I put Solemn in here uh, as card advantage slash ramp because it does a little bit of both. Good blocker, just, it's a good card and it fits well in this deck. And then the last one, Mind Rack Harpy. Flying 2-3 for 4 mana, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, each player mills 3 cards. That is, at most, 12 cards that you're going to get access to before you even have to attack with Quorum. So you go from 
4 cards in a turn to 16 cards in a turn just having this out and attacking with Corp. That's a lot of cards to get to look at. That's a lot of options. This is a very good card. And, of course, it's a flyer. We just talked about Nyx Weaver and having flying creatures. I think this is really good. It's going to go in the deck. We did wind up adding Golgari Grave Troll. I was a little worried that I wasn't going to own one, but then I remember, well, then I saw the set symbol for one of these printings. It came in the Ravnica, like, guild decks, and I have all 10 of those, so obviously I have one. Uh, I also had Disciple of Bolas, not Disciple of Freelis, because that thing's six mana for a three three and does the same thing and has a land on its butt. But this, even if we don't sacrifice Quorum itself, it's still, you know, it's card advantage with a little bit of life gain. I think that's still really good. Uh, chat, Ben uh, suggested the Disciple, reminded me of the Disciple of Bolas and Shadowheart. Shadowheart is similar in the sense that it's repeatable, right? You just sacrifice uh, additional other creatures and then draw cards gain equal to their power. You don't gain life. And then uh, Rishkar's Expertise. How did I forget Rishkar's Expertise? I don't really know, but I did. And now it's here. I love this card because you get to cast a five drop for free. And I think that's really, really strong. It was only from your hand. I guess if somebody were to bounce, well, if somebody bounces corn, we're probably not going to have the biggest thing on the field anyway. I also put Swift Boots in here finally because I remembered. A few more suggestions from chat. Lava Spur Boots, I'm debating keeping in with Swiftwood Boots just to have the option. But Haste and Ward, that's pretty cool. Plus the plus one power is not nothing on a Quorum when you're trying to make him punch people in the face. Uh, we added a bunch of these Quorum's power cards, and these are the cards that are going to help us make Quorum hit as hard as possible. One mana, 1313, that will instantly die because your life total will be 40 and it'll get negative 27. Uh, Death Shadow, you want that in your graveyard, super easy. Lord of Extinction, power and toughness equal to number of cards in all graveyards. It's kind of like a consuming aberration, except it doesn't mill itself. Um, but still, very, very good. You want to entomb this into your graveyard as soon as possible, punch somebody in the face. He basically goes up by four every time Quorum string, uh, swings. Malignus at the beginning of the game is a 2020. The damage can't be rented part is kind of cute. Um, not going to be super relevant in our deck, but that's fine. I'm going to skip over Rex for a second because that one's a special one I want to talk about. Gargle, 18 power. Nothing nothing fancy about it. You want to put it in your graveyard. That's it. That's all you want. Erg, this was a, a suggestion from Ben too. Equal to the number of land cards in your graveyard, which I was kind of like, eh, that's not bad, but it's not great. Um, because hopefully with a few of the other cards that we might put in, we're going to try to get a lot of lands out of our graveyard. Again, Excavator, uh, Crucible of Worlds, etc, etc, right? But I didn't read the middle ability at the beginning of your upkeep. Look at the top card of your library, and you can put that card into your graveyard. Ben said it best. It's like drawing an extra card when Quorum's on the field. So, And the sacrifice land life gain, like having little bits and pieces of incidental life gain are never never bad, I feel. So, yeah. I like that actually a lot more than I thought I did. Now, Titanoth Rex is an 11-11 trample that you're almost always going to cycle. So you're always going to replace it, card advantage. When you cycle it, put a trample counter on target creature you control. This is from Ikoria, where uh, keyword counters became a thing. Obviously, you're going to put this on Quorum, because that's one thing we haven't really talked about yet is how do we make sure that Quorum hits people's life totals. That's very important for the deck, because that's probably how you're going to knock people out. They're also probably going to be a little bit of a threat with that, but it's important to know how to do that. So I'm usually not a fan of uh, lands like Rogue's Passage. I feel like five land to five mana to make your card uh, unblockable is kind of a lot, but it's actually really important for this deck. So that's probably going to go in when we talk about lands and maybe some other things that give like trample or unblockable or, or whatever, you know, so we added a few more cards. Return of the Wild Speaker is another kind of like rich cards expertise type thing where we're going to draw a buttload of cards with the core. We also added this category of into the red zone. Brawn is really good. Filth, Urborg is going to go in the deck. Uh, so this is going to give everybody swamps, so they're not going to be able to block. Grook's Uprising is going to give all creatures trample. It's also in the card advantage area because you do draw cards. I have Loxon and Warhammer in here. I don't know if he's on, if Loxon and Warhammer is on the sheet for Quorum or not, because again, we're not using the Quorum sheet on EDA track, but I feel like the trample plus the lifelink is really important. Uh, just, just because we're not going to have a very wide uh, field, so I think gaining a lot of life might sometimes be really important. 
chat talked about Jared as a, another means of killing the table. Obviously, if you're sacrificing Corum with a Malignus in the field, then you're going to deal basically half of the highest life total to everybody. And then we just have Anger. These aren't uh, categorized because I don't they don't fall into any of the categories we have right now. We, maybe we'll put them in later. Uh, but Anger is just to be able to stick Corum and immediately swing with them. I feel like that's important. We added some cards for interaction. Most of these are instants. A few of them are sorceries. Our two board wipes and then one of the targeted removal. Assassin's Trophy. Get rid of anything. Person gets a basic land. Beast Within. Destroy anything, person gets a 3-3, blast from the sack, for big boards, it'll hopefully be cheap, just deal 13 damage to everything. Deadly Rock, which is an expensive card, but I do own one or two of these. Uh, if you control your commander, it's a pre-spell, and you exile a target creature, really good. Hole Breach is the sorcery speed one, artifact enchantment, or artifact and enchantment. Cross and Grip, really good for when you need people to not interact thanks to the split second, gets rid of an artifact enchantment. We're gonna go back to that one, Rakdos Charm. Destroy an artifact, exile target player's graveyard, and one damage, or one damage to, uh, each creature deals one damage to its controller. Important against decks that are going wide, or if somebody else is a graveyard player as well, sometimes you just gotta get rid of somebody's graveyard. Uh, even if people are stealing things out of your graveyard, what's, say, somebody's trying to get rid of stuff in your, or trying to reanimate your stuff, rack those charm, make sure they don't get it. It might be a really hard hit, but sometimes you gotta do that. Uh, terminate, instant speed, destroy a creature, can't be regenerated. Mandate of Abaddon. I didn't know what this is because I don't have a lot of the uh, Warhammer 40k cards, but I know they are really cool and really powerful. Choose target creature you control. It's kind of like a reverse spell the mighty, which is a white uh, board wipe where you choose a creature and everything bigger dies. This is choose a creature, everything smaller dies. Only one will stand. I wish there were more things like single combat in these colors, but that is usually more of a, a white part of the color pie where like pick a creature and that thing lives and everything else dies for people but it is what it is you gotta make do with what you got we are at 62 cards we have filled out the deck with a bunch of little things i don't know 100 percent which ones i haven't said yet so we're gonna go over the ones that i know i put jessica's will in here it's a good spell i should go in like every deck with red because that's how it is now great henge also super good uh Puts a counter on Quorum, which isn't bad for a 0-5. Draws cards, gains life, mana. It's probably going to be cheap if Quorum's been out and you've been able to put anything that you... Any of the power cards into the graveyard, it's going to be a 2-mana spell. Uh, Doom Whisper, because Surveil, is putting things into the graveyard. Buried Alive, putting things into the graveyard. Auric Lore Mage, putting things into the graveyard. Uh, nobody in chat said anything about 6, which I was very disappointed in. I would expect somebody to have said... I'm kidding. Uh, ben uh, asked if I'd put 6 in. I had said that I, had read, I hadn't read the card yet, but for some reason, I don't know why I would want to put it. And then I read the card, and I was like, oh, no, that's really freaking good. I'm putting that in the deck. And then I was silly, and I said, Ben, I can't... Why would you even ask me that? Blah, 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 blah. Citrus Splier, because it just goes really well in the deck. World Shaper goes really well in the deck. Ruminamp Excavator is good in the deck. Felden, in order to get token copies of the big things. Heroic Intervention, just as a way of protecting. Reanimate to get other things back. Um, I put in Filth, Brawn, Anger, Conduit of Worlds for when we mill our lands and we can't get all of them in the same turn. Elemental Bond, because we looked and a lot of our, uh, roughly half-ish of our creatures did have three power or more. Plus, Quorum is probably almost always going to have three power once you get something good in your uh, in your graveyard. Uh, Sign of Blood, because it's my signature spell. I don't know if I already said that. I think that's it. So the next part we're going to do is lands. There's a few lands that I already know that I want. Uh, I talked about Rogue's Passage. Path of Ancestry is good to go in there. Other things that might talk about putting things into the graveyard. There's the Dakmore Salvage that Ben had helped me with the name about in chat. So that I knew to... Because it's a dredge card. So let me put a few of those in and then we'll kind of come back. We went from 62 to 77. So that's 15 uh, non-basic lands essentially. These are the lands that do something for the deck. Uh, even if it's just giving a color... Well, okay. There's a couple in here that are just kind of in here because they're in here. Uh, Bajugabog, again, sometimes you just gotta have grave hate. Grave hate. Uh, Boseju, Boseju, who endures, Jesus Christ, uh, is removal. 
on a land. Command Tower, this is what I was talking about. This just is Jund. Dakmore Salvage, this is the dredge land, dredge land. Exotic Orchard, any color of a land an opponent controls could produce, so helping us play our opponent's white and blue spells. Kessick Wolf Run, helping us get into the red zone. Mana Confluence, same thing as Exotic Orchard. Opal Palace, over time, will make Quorum bigger the more we have to play them. Path of Ancestry, a little bit of card selection. I don't know how many humans or warriors are in the deck. I'm not super worried about that, but it, it's just kind of nice to have a three color uh, land that lets you scry one when you have to replay your commander. And I expect uh, Quorum to get hit a lot. Rogue's Passage, getting into the red zone. Shifting Woodland, this one's kind of cool. You have it become anything, anything, any permanent that's in your graveyard, as long as you have the four or more card types. What about turning it into another friggin' uh, Great Henge, or a Malignus, or a Jared, or a whatever. You know what I mean? That's pretty cool. Shizu, legendary creature, gets Fear, getting into the red zone. Scarred, gets Trample, getting into the red zone. Urborg, this and the Filth basically makes it so that our commander is always unblockable, because everybody will have Swamps, and then you'll have Swamp Block. Witch's Clinic is, uh, again, giving your commander lifelink for when he's really huge and making it hard for people to like one shot you out of the game super good there is as you can see in the lower left 23 card slots left i'm gonna probably fill this up with the shocks the fetches etc and that'll pretty much be the end deck so let me do that really quick as you can see the price point jumped up because some of these lands as you can see uh 17 dollars 48 dollars luckily i own these um shizu 15 750 43. I think I own one of these. 43. I own a couple of these. So, you know, like a lot of the po pro price point jumped up because of some of the land, as is normal in Commander, because we like our fancy lands. Give me a second to put in all the fetches and stuff. That's it. I put in a bunch of lands. I'm not going to go over every single one of these lands because they're not nearly as exciting. Uh, the only ones I do want to mention, uh, I didn't think about them at first, the Surveil lands. Put them on the battlefield, you surveil, that's a card going from your library to the graveyard. I think that's really cool. So they're in there, um, the opponent lands, uh, the fetches, the shocks, Zeatora's proving grounds, savage lands, you know, all that stuff's in there. Um, and then there's three of each basics. Nothing super crazy, as you can see the price point went up a decent amount. This is actually going to be like one of my more expensive decks. That's pretty neat. Gotta give it some love, right? Oh god, if I were to go through and actually do, like, the different printings that I wanted, like, specific printings that I wanted, that would probably skyrocket. But, now, what I do, every time I do one of these, uh, streams, I take a few... I take a few minutes. <laughs> I usually go for a few times, and I do a couple of, like, opening hands, and... Moxfield has a really cool ability... Playtest. Bam. So, this would be an opening hand. This is not super great. Uh, I don't want... Uh, I would keep this if I had another non bajukabog Black Source just because of the Sign and Blood. I could get... Ooh. Ah, I was too greedy. I was too greedy. Alright. Next turn. Okay, a Milliken's not bad. I plan on having more than two opponents. Uh, we'll do the Milliken first for the ramp, because now when I play this forest, I can core him. Next turn. Forest. Tap. Tap. Millicar. Oh, that's a good card. Um, core him. Alright. Next turn. Oh, gosh. How do I, how do I discard more cards? How do I discard more cards? Um, I would tap that, tap that out on the floor, so take one, view library, let's just get into the forest, close and shuffle, um, I do have four now, we'll go, we'll go to combat. We'll attack, which means we'll mill. All right, so he's a 3-3 now. And I can play 
this car. I do luckily have. Oh no, not that button. I hit the wrong button. Tap, tap, which will mill. Okay, that's not a bad card to have. And I'll bring this back. There you go. Next turn. Uh, we want to go fast. So we're going to do commercial district. It'll surveil. I'll put it in the graveyard. Because I don't want to draw. And I don't want it to be the next thing that I play. I will tap this. Search for a card. View library. Let's see. What do we want? What do we want that I could possibly find? So we've attacked once. So we have to remember there's at least three other cards in graveyards. Let's do this. Lord of Extinction equal to the number of all cards in graveyards. I have five, three, so this is now an eight. Do I want to... Can I play this? One, two, three, four, five. I have five mana left. I don't have another red source. I have five, so I could do... Well... Mill a card. Hunter's inside. Oh, that would have been good. That would have been good. Technically, I could cast it. I could have milled and then cast. Things I gotta remember. No, I didn't have double red. I'm playing this. Sorry. Uh, for each creature in your graveyard. Right now, that is... Two. Right? There's the Felden and the Lord of Extinction. Then, go to combat, attack. Mill a card. Oh. So I have seven, plus now six others, because we've attacked twice. Turn five, he's swinging for 13. Oh, he has two counters. I didn't realize there were counters. Uh, and I can regenerate him. Okay. Next turn, draw. I did not have any dredge cards in here, right? No. Okay, good. I would want... Tap, tap. I'm going to regenerate this twice. Taking the counters off. Right? Then it's going to die. Now the next time I would draw, I would dredge. Right? Right. Oh, wait. Why did I say... It? Yeah, in all cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four. I have a land. What? Did I mill? I didn't mill. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to use that land as my thing for sure. And I'm going to pay five. Boop. You library. What do I want to put? What do I want to put into my graveyard? Why don't we, why don't we put a brawn? Where's Brawn? Seems good, right? So now I have nine. Everybody else has at least six. And I will... Oh. Why not put more? Why not put more? You know what? Uh, what's something that... We'll put a Jared. Now Jared's in the graveyard. I can get him back. I don't have a swamp. I lied. I cannot get it back. But still. So now I have 10. Everybody has 6. So that's 16. Boop. Everybody mill. I have 11 plus 9. That's a 20. 20 damage. With trample. Commander. Turn 6. That's pretty neat. Alright. Let's. Let's do another one. Just real quick. Just real quick. Why not? Eh? Why not? Ooh. Um. Uh. Alright. Watch this. Right? These. These. Watch it. Bam. I'm not going to play a line. I'm going to pass turn. 
then next turn I'm going to put this and this in oh, into my graveyard in order to bring that back. That's so good. Uh Enders tapped. I'll surveil. I can't remember I can't think of too many times where I'm not gonna put it into the grave. <laughs> <laughs> Next turn. Um, God, I need a, a black source. There we go. There we go. All right. Next turn. Tap these two for this. Uh, land for turn will be that. Next turn. Uh, black, green. I don't have a red source. Do now. Boop, 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 boop. Quorum. Uh, we'll tap just because. Why not? Oh, now the Lord of Extinction. Five power commander. Next turn. So this is much slower, right? Like you can see that this is a lot slower. Um, what do I do with my entire life? Um, I think you just tap. Give him unblockable. Wing. So six. Oh, <gasps> was malignant in the graveyard? Oh my god! Oh, I just killed somebody. I didn't kill somebody. Um, I just did twenty damage, twenty commander damage. Some unblockable to somebody. Turn six. This is dumb. Oh gosh! Oh gosh! Everything's everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Draw a card for turn. Oh, well now I want to do that. I wanted to dredge the land. Alright. Uh, that's going to go in there. We're going to view library. We're going to find... Uh, we need a black. Black red. Black red. Black red. Black red is... No, we want a green red. We want we want something with green. We're gonna put that on close shuffle. We're gonna lose three. Tap that. Play that. Fine, we won't get all our value. Uh we'll do that. No, 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 because look, red, we're going to draw two, and discard two. We're going to discard that, and that. Now I do want, yeah, now I want the stomping ground. Oh, I see what you're saying. Ah, oh, you were right. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. Did I draw cards yet? I didn't draw cards. Right? Yeah, that was... Okay. And then that. Uh, I have two mana left. What do I want to do? What else is in here? Uh, anger, fifth foot. Okay. No, nothing. I will simply... Oh. I want this on. And then... Next turn. Uh, I'll do... That... I think we're gonna take it this way. Tap. Equippy. Right, and then attack. Mill three, and then what do I do? Put a land from among them into your hand. Uh, probably, probably path. Yeah. All right. Not bad. Uh, that would be attack for three. Turn three. That's fine. That's nothing major. Uh, 
I will go to combat. I will attack. I will mill three. I could get a land from them, but I don't have any. I, all the, wait, hold on. As long as it's your turn, non-land, permanent cards in your graveyard have your trace. You may cast permanent cards from your graveyard by discarding a land in addition to paying. Tap. Discard land. Play burb. Tap, tap, this is three now. Is it any combination? So three. <laughs> I'm just doing shit, like I don't know what's going on. Uh, tap, tap for... For two, Corum. What's in my graveyard? What what is the power of this thing? Eighteen. Probably drawing a card. Uh, ooh, wait. Uh, tap. Move you here. Uh, go. Oh wait, green, green, bam, sure why not, go to combat, swing 18, that just a middle of three, one, two, three, cool, all right, I can pick a land from among them to put back in my hand, okay, cool. I will. So I just. What did I just. I just swung for 18. 21. Turn 5. 18 of the commander. I can also tap. Discard. Hold on. Great there. Because there's a delighted halfling that I can bring back. That's the. What, whatchamacallit thing? Uh, it will come in. Get a counter. I gain two life. I draw another card. It's a land. Um, I haven't played a land this turn. I didn't even do the scry. Uh, I assume everybody is my opponent at this point. <laughs> I think the deck works. I think the deck works. This stream has been about two hours and six minutes. I don't know how much the overall video is going to be because I am going to put all of those replays in there. But it looks, it feels good. It feels good. Quorum, and this is only with my cards that I have access to in Quorum. Remember, Quorum can, can take other people's lands and spells and stuff. So who knows what they're going to have. Uh, absolutely love all the graveyard fillers. Uh, that felt really good. Um, especially like the Auric Lore Mage. That was, that was pretty sexy. I had a Scheming Symmetry that I don't... Did I use Skimming Symmetry? I don't think I did in like that second one. But either way, it's fine. Um, yeah, that was really cool. And like you saw, turn five, turn six, swinging for near death. Um, one of those was what, 20 unblockable? Because I got the Malignus in there? It's pretty nice, pretty nice. Um, yeah, I will make sure this uh, deck list is in the video link below. Of course, if you enjoyed this, Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. Looking at my analytics on YouTube, and I should probably copy and paste this into this video, Editor Seth, 86% of you are not subscribed who are watching these videos. So definitely make sure you're hitting the subscribe button. Follow the twitch.tv slash the Seth Cross link. Fridays and Saturdays, I'm usually streaming. Uh, Fridays is gameplay, Saturdays are these streams where we build the deck together and I make these videos up and I cut them up later and they go on YouTube. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash, or I think it's x.com now, slash Lee Seth Cross. 
There is also a Discord that is free to join. Anybody can join. We try to make sure that it's fun, safe, and a good time for everybody to come talk about magic and all kinds of other things. That's also where I get the players from for those Friday night streams, so definitely check that out. And yeah, I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.